Hello everyone and welcome back. In this lesson we're going to introduce the notion of form arrays. So we have here an angular form that is not yet linked to our form group, defined here on step-free component of our multi-step form. So we have here in our template a couple of form controls that we want to repeat each time that the user clicks here on an add button at the bottom of the component. So how are we going to do that? Well, the first thing is to define here our form model. Let's say that this form allows us to edit a list of lessons. So we're going to create here a lessons property. This lessons property is not going to be an ordinary form control. Instead, this is going to be a form array. We can create a form array by using here the form builder API and by calling here the array method. So this just created here a form array and we need to pass in here a series of form controls. In this case, we're going to create an empty array with no controls inside it yet. So what is the difference between a form array and a normal form control? Why are we not defining these two form controls, the lesson title and the lesson difficulty level, as normal form controls? Well, we want this form to be dynamic and we want to be able to add and remove from controls from the form at runtime, depending on how the user interacts with the form. With a form array, we can easily add or remove controls to a working form. And because a form group is also a form control, we can also use the form array API in order to add new nested forms to our form. So in the case here of our parent form, we would like whenever the user clicks here on the add button to add a nested subform containing the title and the difficulty level selection box. If the user clicks on add again, we would like to add a second line to our lessons list with another input and another select box that would allow the user to edit the second lesson of the list and so forth. So the user is going to be able to edit each of the lessons on the lesson list independently using an input and a select box per lesson. In order to link our form array that we have defined here, the lessons form array to our template, we are going to be using a new directive, which is the form array name directive. And we're going to specify here the lessons form array. So now all of this container div is going to be linked here to our lessons form array. Now let's see how can we add controls to the form array, which let's remember is initially empty. So no controls exist, meaning that the lessons list is going to be empty to start with. Only when the user clicks here on the add lesson button will some controls be added to the list. Let's then add here an event click handler and let's trigger here a new component method called add lesson. Let's go ahead and let's start implementing add lesson. Whenever the lesson is added to the lessons list, we want to show to the user one pair of commands containing here an input and a material select box for that particular lesson. And we can do so by adding a new form group here to our lessons array. In order to add something to the lessons array, we first need to somehow access it. Let's create here a convenient getter in order to access the lessons array. So we can do so by accessing here our form. So this is the parent form of our step free component. From here, we are going to access the controls array. And we only have one control on this uh, form. As we can see, it's the lessons form array. From here, we are going to return this as the output of our getter and we are going to define this as the form array type. So here on the add lesson, the first thing that we need to do is to access here the lessons getter. From here, we can see the API of our form array. As we can see, this works very much like a plain array. We can push new controls to the form array. We can clear the form array. We can access each individual control. We can insert a control at a given position, we can grab the length of the form array, etc. Let's see how can we use this API to implement here add lesson. So whenever we add a lesson, we want to create a new form group containing two controls 
let's then define here our lesson form group. We are going to be using here the form builder API to define here a new form group. Let's add it a couple of controls. The first control that we're going to be adding is the title of our form and we are going to assign this the initial value of an empty string and let's say that this form field is required. So let's apply here the required validator. And in a very similar way, we're going to define here the level form field. Let's define here the initial value, which is going to be the beginner level. And let's also make this a mandatory field. So now with this, we have here defined a form group that is going to allow us to edit one single lesson. Let's now add this group, which is also a form control here to our form array. We can do so using our getter and we can call here the push API. We are going to pass in here the lesson form and with this we have added as the first position of our form array a control which happens to also be a form with two fields. And with this we have finished here the implementation of add lesson so whenever the user clicks here on the add button our form model is going to be updated with a new nested lesson form. Now all we have to do is to link those nested lesson forms here to our template somehow. In order to do that, the first thing that we're going to do is to define here a new container element and we're going to be doing that using the ng container directive in order to avoid creating here a new container div. We are going to take here this form array name directive that is linking this section of the page to our form array and we're going to apply it to the ng container instead. Now inside here this ng container section of the page what we want to do is to loop through the multiple controls here in our form array and each control is going to be its own form group. For that let's use here ng container again in order to avoid creating a nested div just for looping here through our form array. Let's loop through it using ng4. Let's access here the form array using the lessons getter and let's access the array of controls itself via the controls property. Let's now loop through the elements of each array using the let of syntax. So each member of this array is going to be a lesson form. So we are going to be able to access it here using this local template variable. Now all we have to do is to take the lesson form row HTML that we had here and we are going to move it here inside our loop. This lesson form row contains the form for a given lesson. So let's apply here the form group directive and pass it here the reference to our lesson form that we grabbed here from our form array. Now all we have to do is to bind these controls that we have here to the controls here of our form model. We can do so as usual using the form control name directive. Let's link this to the title control that we have defined here in the model of our lesson form. And now all we have to do is to link the level property. We can do so by applying here the form control name directive here to our material select box. And with this, we have finished the implementation of our add lesson functionality. Now let's also implement the delete button. Whenever we click on this delete button, what we want to do is we want to remove one of the lesson forms from the lessons form array. So for that, we need to know which position in the array we want to remove. We can do that by grabbing here the iteration index of the ng4 directive by using the let syntax, declaring here a local template variable e and assigning it to the index variable. So this is going to be 0, 1, 2, etc. for each of the lesson form rows. We can now add a click handler here to our delete button. Let's make this button call here a delete lesson function and let's pass it the index that we want to delete. We are going to now implement this here in our component class. So the index that we receive here is going to be the lesson index. And this is going to be of type number. Now, in order to remove something here from the array, we can simply access here the form array using the getter and we can call here the remove at API and pass it the lesson index. And with this, we have implemented the delete functionality. So let's now try things out. 
let's now switch here to a larger window where we have the initial state of our lessons form. As we can see, our form array is initially empty, so we don't have here any lesson form yet. However, if we click here on the Add Lesson button, we are going to see that we have added here a form to our form array. So this that we have here, this line, is a form containing two form controls. We are going to type in here the title for the first lesson and let's go ahead and let's select here a difficulty level. If we remove here this field, we are going to see that this is now marked as red. So the validation is working correctly at the level of this form. So let's go ahead and add a title again and add a second lesson. And as we click here on the button for the second time, we can see that we get here a separate form for lesson two, etc. We can also add here a first form. Let's give it a title as well and let's now try out here the delete functionality. So if I delete here lesson 2, I'm going to be left with only lesson 1 and 3 as expected. And if I delete everything, the form will be cleaned again and we will have no form controls in our form array. And with this, we have finished the implementation of our form array example. Now let's try out the whole form. Let's see how can we fill in all the form details and at the end enable here the create course button only when all the steps of the multi-step form have been filled in correctly.